And I'm, I'm Anna Sears from Brighton. And I'm Nedra Harvey from Rochester. We're co-founders of Our Cause, Rochesterians Concerned About Unsafe Shale Gas Extraction. We have devoted the past two years to raising awareness of fracking's potential impacts on our community. This afternoon, we are here to deliver petitions calling upon Monroe County Executive Maggie Brooks to prohibit all fracking-related activities, including fracking waste disposal on county lands, treatment plants, and in landfills. This evening, we'll deliver the same to the legislature. For the past six months, our cause and many dedicated volunteers, many of whom are here, have been getting signatures on our petition, which reads, the magnitude of New York State's upcoming decision to permit and regulate high volume, slick water, horizontal hydrofracking, fracking for short, demands immediate attention and action by our county legislature to ensure self-determination and the health and safety of our community. Therefore, we the undersigned call upon the county to prohibit natural gas and petroleum exploration and extraction and all its ancillary activities within the county's jurisdiction in order to prevent impacts of this complex, heavy industrial activity on our quality of life and two, to protect our health by safeguarding clean water, air, and land for generations to come. And in these 346 pages of petitions, there are over 4,000 signatures, 4,040 to be exact, and we're still counting. There are more that we haven't counted. This petition drive is one phase of an ongoing citizen-led campaign to bring concerns about fracking to the attention of our elected county officials. Situated on the Utica Shale, a geological formation rich in natural gas, Monroe County-owned properties require the protection of specific land and road use legislation. County lands, roads, and bridges face intensive wear and tear, chemical spills, and other accidents from heavy-duty trucks transporting fracking materials. One particular concern that must be addressed immediately is the disposal of fracking waste. Monroe County's water treatment facilities and landfills are not equipped to handle such toxic matter. The county executive was elected to protect our health, safety, and welfare, yet she would not rule out accepting toxic fracking waste, which contains hazardous chemicals, heavy metals, and radioactive materials. Fracking and its related activities is an extremely dangerous, heavy industrial process that comes with enormous cost to our environment and health, far outweighing the short-term potential benefits. Monroe County is blessed with abundant fresh water, the Finger Lakes to our south, and Lake Ontario to our north. Are we really willing to risk losing fresh water, our most valuable resource, to the unsustainable industry of fracking? It is the county government's obligation to prevent contamination of our water supply and protect our health and environment. The thousands of local residents who've signed our petition, expect these elected officials to take a stand now before it's too late. Good afternoon. We know that the Brooks administration has said that they will not make a decision at this time about whether to accept hydrofracking wastewater for treatment in our wastewater treatment uh, facility. They've said that they want they haven't even had an application or a request come forward yet. We know that such wastewater would be laden with toxic materials. We know that Monroe County water treatment facilities don't accept hazardous waste. We know that the governor and the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation have decided to proceed with a thorough review by health and medical experts um, to look at the health impacts of hydrofracking. That's why it's imperative that as part of a responsible, a responsible decision-making process and in the interest of protecting home rule for our county, the county must adopt a moratorium now. Now, 
is the time to adopt a moratorium on hydrofracking and related activities. This would give the county time, the time it needs to study the issue before an application walks in the door and to put in place necessary regulations and laws to protect our water, our health, our roads, and our quality of life, which the county executive has talked about wanting to protect for a very long time. Our water resources and the health of our people are precious. We don't want to become another love canal. That's why I'm calling on Maggie Brooks to ask the county legislature for a moratorium to study the impacts and issues related to hydrofracking in order to consider carefully what protective and preventive actions the county may need to take up to and including a possible ban. Several towns in Monroe County, including Brighton, and our sister counties in upstate New York have already taken action. Monroe County cannot, must not, continue to sit on its hands. Thank you. stretches up beyond the Catskills and in the Syracuse watershed and not in ours. Are we more uh, expendable to the poisons involved? It's my understanding that water supplies to New York City and perhaps Syracuse as well, but I know New York City, that water is not filtered. It's unfiltered water. And because of that, the concern was that the hydrofracking activity would stir up so much, um, so many particles and material in the water that they would then have to filter it and that cost would be extraordinary and so it was exempted for that reason. Um, that's the explanation that I have read and heard publicly given. Um, but when you consider the fact that the greater Rochester area derives part of its water supply from Hemlock Lake, which is in the southern tier, which is in the Finger Lakes area and is vulnerable to hydrofracking. Um, that's something that really matters to us because if that water is negatively impacted, if it, if it is spoiled, then Brighton, Parts of Rochester, parts of eastern Monroe County will really suffer. We get some of our water from on Lake Ontario, but hemlock is an important resource that we really must protect. Also, I was wondering if you could talk about what happens, what's happened in other places where they've treated this water, and if you know what's been happening where they treat water in municipal um, um, water treatment centers? The, um, as far as Monroe County wastewater treatment plants, FOILs, not us, but FOILs have been delivered, um, requested. Um, as far as wastewater treatment plants that have accepted the waste, they have, the salts have corroded them and the chemicals have mucked them up big time. So. That's what we've heard. I just wanted to talk, ask about the brine that they spread on the roads. Um, it's a cheap way of, of, instead of the salt and the sand, they're using this hydrofracking brine. If you could talk about that, because I don't think that's been mentioned in any of the news. Well, we know that some, some counties and some towns throughout the state are using it, but then others are trying to prevent it. They're trying to uh, actively uh, place a moratorium on that. Well, it's this flowback that comes out of the wells and contains excessive amounts of salt from, from deep underground, and it contains radioactive material. The things that are normal, the normally occurring radioactive material in the ground comes up with this brine. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a danger. They're using it as uh, ice melt in the winter. They're using it to uh, tamp down dust. In the, in the summer, and some places have even used it on land, uh, on fields as fertilizer. But uh, they have to apply to the DEC. There's a, something called a beneficial use determination that gives permits for the, uh, 
for the brine. So it's again, it's a it's an issue that locally people have to be aware of and actively uh, pursue. I just wanted to speak to the issue of the FOIL requests because it's been my understanding that the FOIL requests have been denied by the county. And from what I've seen and gathered, and I don't want to make this a partisan issue because it's not a partisan issue, the reason for the denial is something that's absolutely ridiculous. There's no foundation for it. And I would like to know why we, as citizens of Monroe County, and the full legislature, both sides of the aisle, do not have access to the information that we need to see whether this county is moving forward to accept fracking waste. What steps have they taken? They're deliberately obscuring the steps that they're taking by not responding to the FOIL requests or by denying them. Right now, the hydrofracking group, our cause is at Maggie Brooks's office. They knocked. The secretary, instead of answering the door, had to go and call somebody. So we're waiting for her to get clearance for citizens to go into Maggie Brooks's office and uh, to give petitions, I guess, uh, access to the county executive is not readily available. Hi. Yes, we would like to deliver these 4,000 plus petition signatures to the county executive. Okay. And, yes, and can we get a receipt, please? I'm sure if you want to hold on a second. Yes, thank, thank you. So they just handed it to the person at the desk and have asked for a receipt for the, how many is it? 4,000? 4, 4,040. Four, plus. <laughs> 4,040, yeah. I have three more in my purse. Okay. <laughs> we have more. Actually, there are more. Yeah. There are more. Okay. Online and haven't been counting yet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, I didn't have it on. <laughs> it helps if I turn it on.